Hello, this is Keith Kaiser with a word of wisdom from the Gospel according to Mark. This is part 7, and today we're reading in the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, and verse 14. It says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. We saw that John the Baptist came as the forerunner to prepare things for the Lord Jesus, to prepare the way of the Lord, as Isaiah 40 had prophesied. And he called people to repent. In fact, he had a sign of repentance, baptism unto repentance, where people would come and confess their sins and demonstrate that they weren't right, they weren't ready to receive Messiah, the King, in spite of what uh, the thinking of their leadership may have been, who thought, well, we've got it all under control. Now Messiah just comes to needs to come and add his power, and we can topple the Romans and everything will be fine. No, John the Baptist said, there's a lot wrong with you. You need to repent and prepare yourselves for the coming of the Lord. You need to turn from your sin to God and await his son from uh, heaven, as it were, the one who was coming to them. And so... Uh, John had that wonderful ministry, but it was a ministry that was cut short by persecution, and Mark will revisit that later in this book. But here in verse 14, it says, Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee. And John himself recognized that his ministry was only for a limited time, and that the point of it was to make much of Christ, to point to him, and then to get out of the way. As he said in John 3, he must increase, I must decrease. I think that's about the finest uh, credo that a worker for the Lord can have. And whatever work God gives you to do, dear believer, make it so that there's less of you and more of Christ. Let people see more of him. Let him increase. Let us decrease. It's sort of like being a candle, how a candle burns down, doesn't it? It's consumed by the flame. And so our service for the Lord ought to, yes, consume our lives, burn up our time, burn up our resources, burn up our bodies and minds and the usage of them over what length of time God gives us to serve. But it's all for the point of burning brightly for the Lord, of shining our light on him. That's exactly what the scriptures would enjoin. And so John was put in prison and Jesus came to Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Matthew, of course, is going to quote Isaiah 9 and point out that this is Galilee of the nations. This is the people who had sat in darkness and they'd seen a great light. They were that place that was sort of in the northern territory, kind of the border with a lot of the invading armies like the Arameans or Syrians or the Assyrians, different kingdom, or the Babylonians or the Medo-Persians, always coming down from the north. And, of course, these nations being on borderland, there was a lot of idolatry that came across, such as how it was established at Caesarea Philippi in the northern part of the nation. 200 years before the time of our Lord, there was already a grotto of Pan there, a shrine to the Greek god Pan. And over the centuries, other gods were added there. So it was a unique place later for the Lord Jesus to come with his disciples and say, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they gave him various ideas. Of course, they were all scriptural ideas because they were Jews raised with the Holy Scriptures. Uh, but that certainly Caesarea Philippi was the place where man's opinion of what God was like was on display. And yet the Lord Jesus was going to come into that very dark region of Galilee uh, which the southern part of Israel would have sneered at. That was where Jerusalem was. That was where the temple was, where the Sanhedrin was. And so the scribes and the Pharisees uh, that were the denizens of that area would have looked down on Galilee. And yet that's the very place the Lord Jesus begins his ministry. Now it describes his work in verse 14 as saying he was preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Uh, older generation of teachers, in their zeal for dispensations, made a lot of the distinction between 
the gospel of the kingdom and the gospel of the Christian church. But uh, I personally don't believe that, although I certainly do see dispensational distinctions in Scripture and very much believe in the difference between uh, God's earthly people, Israel, and God's heavenly people, the church. When we talk about the gospel, the substance of the gospel is the same. It's faith in the one that God has provided for salvation, who is our Lord Jesus Christ. And yes, preaching in, in this sense, preaching of the kingdom of God, saying the kingdom is here, the kingdom of God's at hand. Why? Because the Lord Jesus is the king. He's the king of kings and Lord of lords. It was never something like the kingdom of God was something that was faith plus works, for instance, or that the kingdom of God was something that demanded repentance, but the Christian gospel in the church age doesn't demand repentance. If you follow the word repentance through the Bible, you find all the way to the last book, Revelation, the Christian churches are being told about repentance. And in Acts 20, Paul would say that he went about preaching the gospel, repentance and faith towards God, he described it as, both to Jew and Gentile. So this wasn't something restricted for just the days in which the Lord Jesus came ministering. Yes, it was the gospel of the kingdom of God saying, the king is here. In that sense, they had a unique opportunity to receive the king at that point, to say, yes, we'll follow the king that God has set forth. Uh, we know as a nation, they eventually rejected him and didn't receive him. And so uh, the times of the Gentiles have continued. And instead of Israel coming into the blessing that's promised to them in the Old Testament, that's put on hold. Blindness in part has happened to them, Romans says, and the church age has begun. Now Jew and Gentile are being made one body in Christ. Uh, but the substance of his message to them was repent and believe in the gospel. Again, gospel meaning good news. Repent meaning a change of mind. Not just mental assent, though. Not just saying, well, I know the facts about Jesus. I know he was a historical man. Well, you'd have to be a foolish historian to deny the existence of Jesus. I mean, even atheists acknowledge, unless they're really rabid, okay? Atheist historians, people who have been trained in historical methodology, historiography as it's called, they would acknowledge there's plenty of evidence in the extra-biblical sources, much less in the Bible, to prove that Jesus of Nazareth must have existed. Other people say, well, no, no, I do believe Jesus is the Son of God. I do believe he was God incarnate, God who took on flesh. I do believe he died on the cross. I do believe in the resurrection. But one can believe all that through mental assent. You can believe that in your head and yet never repent. Never see yourself as God sees you, saying, I've been all wrong. I've been trying to do it my way. I need to turn to God and receive the Lord Jesus Christ. I need to put my faith in him. And so he tells them to repent and believe. These are flip sides of the same coin. Repentance, I'm coming to an, to an end of myself, and I'm agreeing with God about myself. Yes, I'm a sinner. Yes, I'm really that bad. Yes, I can't be saved by any other means than faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, because only the Lord Jesus offers true salvation. The reason is because only he made the sacrifice that pays for sin, and only he rose again from the dead, never to die anymore. There's no world leader, religious leader, philosopher that ever did that. There's no religion that offers you the certainty today of knowing sins forgiven, knowing that they're put away, knowing you have a relationship with the living God, and knowing that you have a lasting home for eternity in heaven. There's none that can tell you you won't be lost and go to hell, except biblical Christianity, which is less a religion than a relationship. It's coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ, repenting, saying, right, I'm a sinner. I don't want to be this way anymore. I want you to come in and make me a new creature in Christ Jesus. I will believe on the Lord Jesus. I'll believe the good news about him, that he is God, that he came to save me, that his cross death is the only way by which I can be saved, and that God raised him from the dead to vindicate him and prove that this is true. And so the Lord Jesus came preaching that message. In a way, he was picking up where 
John left off. John was now in prison, but now came the Lord Jesus, and the people still needed to repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, as far as the kingdom of God, it is uh, something that is a big subject in Scripture. And let me just say, I fully believe that it's going to have its physical manifestation, that we are going to see the Lord Jesus rule and reign on this earth physically from Jerusalem. And many scriptures from Romans 9, 10, and 11 to Isaiah 2 to Micah 4 to Zechariah 12 through 14 to many other parts of the word of God aver for us that the Lord Jesus is going to sit on the throne of his father David and rule from Jerusalem. He's not on that throne today yet. He's seated alongside his father on his throne. And Revelation, when he's talking to the seven churches, he says that to the overcomer, I will give to sit on my throne, even as I overcame and am seated on my father's throne. And so the Lord Jesus is waiting for that day when he'll come and when Psalm 2 will be fulfilled, that that great king who was raised from the dead will rule and reign from Jerusalem and will put all of his enemies down. I hope you won't be on the enemy's side in that day. I hope you'll be among the believing side who will be ruling and reigning with the Lord. And you can say, there's no judgment for me because the Lord Jesus took my judgment on the cross. That's a word of wisdom from the Gospel of Mark. I hope you enjoyed it.